Hello, welcome to the Area Solution channel. In this video, we'll be looking at an example that borders on the radial and transverse coordinate system as applicable to a particle undergoing curvilinear motion. And we're going to walk through this example in which a particle moves along a path whose equation along the radial axis is given as r is equal to half theta square. If the transverse displacement is given as theta is equal to 1 over 5 t cube radians, we're told to determine the velocity and acceleration of the particle when theta is equal to 60 degrees. Well, for this case, we assume that the time t is in SI unit that seconds. And to solve this problem, we need to first identify what has been given to us and what is required of us. We were given the radar component. That's the equation for the radii component of the motion of the particle to be half theta square. And we're given the transverse components that the angular displacement per time to be 1 over 5 t cube. Now we see that the radial component is a function of the angular components, which is also a function of time. Then we are told to look for two items, velocity and acceleration of the particle when when theta is equal to 60 degrees so um, primarily um, we want to walk through this problem by first calling forth our equations we have the equation for velocity when the radial and tangential components are given for a particular motion then we have the equation for calculating the acceleration and one may need to identify or need to estimate some of all these variables arrow theta dot arrow, arrow dot theta dot dot and arrow dot dot which are just derivative of the radii and the tangential components respectively of course we already have an equation for arrow based on the question that was given to us. So the next item we want to estimate now is theta dot. And by theta dot, we just mean the time derivative of theta. That's the dt of theta. And we're given theta from the equation to be 1 over 5 t cube. So if we take our value of theta and put into our equation to estimate for theta dot, we get that d dt of theta is equal to d dt of the value of um, our theta that we had initially and if we differentiate this value with respect to time we are likely going to get 3 over 5 t square we know that from the question arrow the radii position of the object at every point in time is a function of the angular position which is half theta square and we already had our um, theta to be 1 over 5 t cube so if we put this value of theta into our equation to get the value of our radii component we have that our radii component r is equal to 1 over 2 multiplied by the value of theta and if we simplify this we have that our radii component to be equal to 1 over 50 multiplied by t raised to power 6 1 over 50 multiplied by t raised to power 6 where t is the time then the next item we want to find r dot to find r dot is just the time derivative of r that's the time derivative of our radii components so if we differentiate or if we start by first putting the value of our radii component in place of r that's 1 over 50 t raised to power 6 we have the r dot is equal to ddt of that value and if we differentiate this we'll get our r dot to be 6 over 50 multiplied by t raised to power 5 multiplied by t raised to power 5. The next item we may want to find theta dot dot, which is the second time derivative of theta, or we can say is the time derivative of theta dot. So if we differentiate theta dot with respect to time, we'll get theta dot dot. And so if that is evaluated, we get that theta dot dot is equal to 6 over 5 t. And the next we want to find r dot dot, which is the time derivative of r dot if we do that we get that r dot dot is equal to ddt of r dot and if you input the value of r dot into the equation and differentiate you get that r dot dot is equal to 30 over 50 t raised to power 4 if we, having gotten that if you bring forth your two equations that's for calculating the velocity and the acceleration as a function of time when these radial components and transverse components are given we have that First and foremost, we may need to find the values of all these items, arrow theta dot, arrow dot, and arrow dot dot, as well as theta dot dot. 
at the time when theta is equal to 60 degrees. So when theta is equal to 60 degrees, one we want to ask what is the time. First, we want to convert the 60 degrees to radians. So we multiply by pi and we divide by 180 degrees to get 1.0473 radians. But what we need is a time value. And we know that theta is equal to 1 over 5t cubed. So if we make that subject of the formula, we're going to have t to be equal to 5 times theta always to the power 1 over 3. And because we have the value of theta, if we put that into the equation of time, we'll be able to evaluate and get our answer for time when theta is equal to 60 degrees to be 1.7366 seconds. But we're not looking for time. We're looking for time so that we can put them back into the different equations that we've obtained and take them into our equation for velocity and acceleration so that we can evaluate our and take them back into our main equation to evaluate our velocity and acceleration. So next is to calculate the value of velocity when time is equal to 1.7336 seconds. So to do that, we need to estimate first the radar component of the velocity, and to do that, we need to estimate the value of r dot. We have that r dot, which we derive before to be 6 over 50 t5. So if we put our value of time into this equation, we and evaluate, we're going to get arrow dot to be 1.90 meter per second. So we have that our VR is equal to arrow dot is equal to 1.90 meter per second. So having gotten that, the next thing we may want to find the transverse component of our velocity, which is equal to r theta dot. So one may want to first estimate the value of theta dot, which is 3 over 5 multiplied by t square. And if you put our value of time into the equation and evaluate, we get our theta dot to be 1.81 per second. And having gotten that, we can quickly also estimate the value of r. We know from our equations that was given from the question that r is equal to 1 over 50 t raised to the power 6. Of course, r is also equal to um, 1 over 5 theta square. So whatever case, whatever way you want to use to estimate your value of r, you still get the same answer. So r is equal to 1 over 50 times the value of time raised to the power 6. And if that is evaluated, we get our r value to be equal to 0 0.55 radians. But what we're looking for is our transverse component v theta, which is equal to r times theta dot. So if we bring in, if we find the product of r and theta dot, we, we can therefore get the value of our v theta or transverse com component to be equal to 0 0.99 radii per second. So if we impute our value of radar component and our value of um, transverse component into our equation, we get that our velocity to be equal to 1.90 er, that's in the unit vector of the radar direction, and 0 0.99 in the unit vector of the transverse direction. And we can simplify this further by finding the vectorial sum to get our velocity to be 2.14 meter per second. Next, we may want to evaluate the value of our acceleration by so we're going to walk through each and all of the parts of or components of the acceleration and impute all this value into our equation to, to get the value of acceleration or the component of the acceleration for the time that is requested of us. So we start by looking for the first component, arrow dot dot. We've derived the equation before to be 30 over 50 times t raised to the power 4. But for this case, we are looking for this value when time is equal to 1.7366. So if you put that into the equation for arrow dot dot and you evaluate, you get our value for arrow dot dot to be 5.46 meter per second square. Then the second part we may want to work on is um, the part that contains both arrow and theta dot square. Of course, we've estimated arrow before to be 0 0.55 radians. Then we've estimated the value of theta dot to be 1.81. So next we move on to the other part that contains two r dot theta dots. And we note that uh, we've estimated theta dot. So the next is r dot, which we've also estimated when we're looking for velocity earlier to be 1.90 meter per second. And finally, the last part, which contains both r and theta dot. Of course, we already have our value for r. Then the next is to find the value of theta dot dot for that particular time of 1.7366. We know that theta dot dot is equal to 6 over 5t. So if we put in our value of time 
and simplify, we get that theta dot dot is equal to 2.08 per second square. Then next, uh, we may want to impute all these values into our acceleration equation to get one simple equation. So if we put in all these values that were estimated back into the acceleration equation and we simplify, we'll get 3.6 ER plus 8.02 E theta. Where ER and E theta are the radii axis and the transverse axis respectively. So having gotten this, we want to quickly identify that um, our radii component of acceleration AR is equal to 3.66 meter per second square and our tangential component is equal to 8.02 meter per second square. And these are the two key parts of our acceleration with which the body was moving. So some of the answers we've gotten, we've got our value for velocity and we identified the radar component and transverse component and we're able to simplify further to get one singular value for velocity in meter per second square, which is the total velocity. We did same for acceleration, we identified the radar component and the transverse component and we're able to work it out to get our value of total acceleration with which the body was moving. And the equation may take other forms. Maybe the equation could change or the value of time could vary or some of all these variables could be given to you and you'll be asked to look for some other variables that are not given. So this will be all for now. I want to thank you for your time and I do hope that the video was um, explanatory enough.